Hello, my name's Michael from Inward. I'm a recruiter and I was talking to a mate of mine, I'm going to rename him as Bill, who really got me thinking about a project that I've wanted to do during the summer months when it's quiet. And the story with Bill is that he was a massive earner, lives in Horsforth, uh, that's how I know him, uh, in Leeds, and he was a massive earner. He sold his business and at that particular time, he and his wife had three kids. So where Bill's at now is he's been out of work for 10 years. Um, not quite got enough money to retire, but doesn't need to earn the same kind of money he was earning before. He's got the three kids and he likes to take to swimming and all those kind of things. And when I talked to Bill about it, he said, listen, Mike, you know, 10 years ago, I actually had a pretty good career. I was a capable guy. I knew exactly what I was doing. How am I going to get back in to the employment market? So, you know, I've produced this on behalf of Bill and the other Bills that are out there. Um, there's all the stuff on the screen about, you know, about my background and experience. In terms of, uh, in reply for this, all I'd like you to do is like uh, and share this if you can, and also start following inward. We're going through a marketing campaign that's increasing our presence on Instagram, on Twitter. We're already quite big on um, LinkedIn. So if you could start following us, uh, that'd be much appreciated. So what's happened in the past 10 years is the recruitment market and, and hiring has changed. Um, and we're going to cover that. There's a lot more tech and the presentation style that companies are using has changed. I'm going to talk to uh, you about how Bill can frame his experience because his experience hasn't changed. It's still there, albeit it was 10 years ago. We're going to talk about how people are applying for jobs, how interviews now work, how offers work, and dealing with recruiters and take it as a recruiter who's been one. I've been a recruiter for 21 years. Sometimes you tell people you're in recruitment and it's a bit like a bad smell at a party. But actually there's some really good recruitment companies out there and some good recruiters. So what's changed from a, 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 from a, a technology perspective really is LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn now is massive. And if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, uh, I strongly suggest you should get one because people will look at your LinkedIn profile. Um, also, the, the, the way CVs are presented has changed and I'll come on to that a little bit later. Um, the job boards, the application process has changed. We don't really use Indeed, but I used it for a, uh, a particular job recently. And what I noticed is that 10 years ago when I last used it, actually, it was about getting a CV and, uh, and whacking it through Indeed. That's not how it works now. There's quite often uh, fielding questions and the actual job boards themselves are more uh, usable, they're more intuitive and they're more of a recruiting tool. So when you go on the job boards, you really have to think very carefully about engaging with the job boards almost as if that were, that were replying to and talking to a person. Uh, job briefs. Now, I really think that job briefs are a good place for using Bill as my example, for Bill really to stress his experience because in those job briefs and in the job adverts on the job boards, it will list certain things. It will talk about experience of being organised, experience, I mean, the guy's got three kids, right, so he's fairly organised. It will talk about experience of maybe managing a P&L. This guy ran his own business until, until, until 10 years ago. He knows loads about profit and loss. It might talk about experience in sales. This guy ran his own business and therefore he was a salesperson. Now, actually, if you've got a job brief in there, what, what isn't happening is people are not looking at your CV. They're looking at how you apply to the job brief. And actually, if you're billing, you're worried about those 10 years out, you can circumvent those 10 years by reading and applying to the job brief properly. Also, there's a big thing now about expectations. You know, I filmed this in the last week of August, post-COVID, are we post-COVID, are we ever post-COVID, but sort of post-COVID, and the expectation has changed a lot now. Now, the expectation was changing, but COVID really has accelerated that. And that's expectation around the working flexibility, and that's both location and working hours. There's also a lot more... Um, the expectation has changed a lot more in terms of what Bill can do and what's acceptable for him to take his kids to school and to pick them up from school. You know, like 10, 15 years ago, um, would it have been acceptable for Bill, a 48-year-old man, to say to his boss, listen, boss, I can't make that meeting at 9.15 on Wednesday because I'm taking my little swimming? Probably not. You know, that probably wasn't acceptable, even though nobody would have said it, whereas now that is actually acceptable. So there's expectation level uh, has changed. Now on the screen is, in my opinion, the most perfect CV I have ever seen. And this is how CVs have changed. 
the long, boring, monologue stroke diatribe of you doing your GCSEs. Forget it, no one's interested at all. This CV is beautifully simple. Now, it obviously helps that she went to Stanford and then worked at Google, but clearly your experience and Bill's experience is that equivalent for somebody else. And just because it was 10 years ago doesn't mean that it's not relevant. You can see how Marissa, and she's quite a famous woman if you look her up, you can see how Marissa has set out her experience in a very simple way. And actually, you're looking at what she did 10 years ago. Now, if you've been out of the working world like Bill has for the past 10 years, what could you do with uh, my time? You know, what, what could you put there? And what could you put about uh, you, from it from a personal perspective? I think this is quite a personal CV, really. You get an insight into her. She's a geek. She says that on her CV. I like the fact it's on one page. I like the fact it has a picture. I like the fact the picture is dead simple, professional. You know, you could take that with an iPhone. It's not a picture of her all dressed up when she's off to York races. It's a simple, standard picture. One of the things looking at her CV down the right-hand side that I might change is a bit about expectations. Because I think if you go back to Bill, I don't know how much he used to earn, but I figure it was quite a lot given where he lives and the amount of cash he seems to have. Let's say Bill used to earn £100,000 a year. That's not what he's expecting now. He doesn't want that. If you actually talk to Bill about it, what he really wants to do is uh, get away from his kids. I hesitated then, but he wants to get away from his kids for a few hours a day. He wants to talk to like-minded individuals. And actually, Bill would take a grand and a half, grand a month, something like that. And look at all that experience that you get uh, for a one, one to one and a half thousand pounds a month. So if that were down the right-hand side, instead of most proud of, maybe it might say expectations and maybe it might say something about experience and skills. And in that circle, you put P&L, sales, whatever. You know, that could come across well as a CV. How to apply? Don't use a cover letter. I never read them. I don't think people do. Um, I'd use your LinkedIn connection as well. So I'd have a LinkedIn profile and my LinkedIn profile would be a reflection of uh, the public persona I had. So Twitter, Instagram, um, my CV. Um, and I'd find, I'd see who the hiring manager was in the advert and I'd then connect to them on LinkedIn. It depends how comfortable you are with this. I've spent 21 years placing salespeople. They're comfortable calling people. You might not be, but if you were comfortable calling people, that's a good idea. And think about uh, if you're not getting any replies, you know, I see this all the time on the news. I applied to 300 jobs and didn't get a single reply. Well, you know, if you did my job as a recruiter, some of the applicants that I get are just woeful. You know, they're not bad people, but they couldn't be further away from what the client's looking for. So if you're not getting lots of replies, why? Is it because you're applying to the wrong stuff or is it because your CV isn't conveying the right information for that? We used to have a lady worked for us about four years ago, I would think. Uh, she was something mega like King of Accenture. It was something like that, it literally was. Uh, and she came to us to work on a part-time basis. And what I thought was fascinating when I got talking to her and ultimately interviewed her and employed her is she'd been sending her CVs to part-time jobs. And I'm sure people must have looked at her CV and gone, well, why would she apply to this? Now, actually, if you thought about her CV and put expectations on there, she might have got a bit more reply. Interviewing. The first thing is what to wear. You know, I'm wearing chinos and a shirt. I would say she's quite smart, really, in today's modern world. Um, I, you know, I'm a 43-year-old man, so I've got to be careful about giving fashion advice because I'm not a fashionable person. But I try and dress pretty plain on, on, on the side of smart. In terms of asking stuff, I'd ask dead simple things. What are you looking for? I'd ask them that. Um, I'd get to the end of the interview and I'd say, how do you think this interview's gone? Is there anything else that you want to cover? I'd ask um, very simple questions. You know, if you're, if you're Bill as an example and you want to, to take one of your kids swimming on a Wednesday morning, I'd cover that. I'd cover that then and there. Let's be clear about what's out there. What to say? Forget interview answers. Pe people particularly um, will talk about getting into interview mode. A, that's never worked. And B, it's not on trend. That's not what people are doing. People are having honest conversations with one another. Money, I'd talk about money. I'd talk about what you're on and I'd talk about what you're looking for and why that's the case. You know, Bill's a prime example here. He doesn't need to earn £100,000 a year, nor does he want the stress that goes with it. He wants to start at 10 and finish at 2. There's nothing wrong with that. 
and also nerves i think nerves play quite a big part you know bill's a very successful guy um but i think he'll be nervous when he goes into the into the world of interviewing don't be it's just what it is uh, offers i think you should always negotiate an offer if you feel that you need to um i would sweat the small stuff like taking your kids swimming on a wednesday morning i think that's important and do ask silly questions you know what's the expectation in terms of what i wear my wife um uh, applied to work a volunteer with a charity based in centre leeds what she didn't ask was does is my parking paid for when they offered her a job it turned out it was going to cost her 25 pounds a day to park you know i'd be asking stuff like that up front and i wouldn't accept accept a bad contract which goes without saying i wouldn't completely fall out about a bad contract but i wouldn't necessarily just accept it straight off um recruiters they want to get placements they actually do they're targeted on it you've got to make sure that they can find you so one thing i didn't like about marissa's marissa mayor's cv is that's a pdf if i put a pdf into outlook and i search for the word profit and loss it does not search a pdf whereas it would search a word document i'd be honest about where i'm at that's an obvious thing to say but you know recruiters have done it for a long time a lot of them they can they can sniff it out if it's a lie um and how easy are you to work with Yes, you know, by all means, I have people call me and, and hassle me. That's fine. Um, and also, these, they are really kids on phones. I get that. But they are the key to getting through the door. And I know they're kids on phones giving you advice. But that just is what it is. It isn't going to change. You've just got to stomach that and live with it. Um, let's stay connected. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're, we're going through a marketing exercise at the minute. So you'd have to connect with us and just sort of stick with it. Um, thanks. Hope it helped.